Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy here. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to square a K member. For starters, let's talk about what a K member is. A K member is this guy right here. And what it does is it supports the engine. It also supports some of the front suspension. And in my case, the power steering rack. Uh, it bolts to the body of the vehicle. In this case, it's a Fox body. And a Fox body is a unibody platform, which means it doesn't have a frame that runs from front to back. The body of the vehicle is something of the structure. Uh, I've added these uh, frame connectors to help uh, give it some rigidity, give this body some rigidity. But as I said, this is the K-member here. It supports the engine and the front suspension. As you may have already noticed, I have these spacers here, these half inch spacers between the K-member and the body of the vehicle. I've done this so that I can lower the engine down enough so that I can get hood clearance. And this is actually successful, as you'll see in future episodes. So this might be something that you can do uh, if you're having trouble with hood clearance and you don't want to cut holes in your hood like I didn't want to. Now my K-member is adjustable. It has attachment points here and also up here, there are another two fasteners as well. And if you look closely at where those fasteners pass through the K-member, you can see that they're slotted so they can be moved around a little bit. This rear attachment also goes onto a floating nut assembly that allows it to move around as well. In previous videos, I've done a lot of work on redoing the rear suspension of this vehicle. The next step in my suspension rebuild was to install the K-member, the lower control arms, and also this power steering rack. But we want to make sure that the alignment of this matches up to everything I've done in the rear here. And that's the reason why we're squaring this K-member. So here's a crude drawing and a representation of what we're looking to accomplish today. Uh, this represents the rear axle and the differential. This represents the front and the K-member, which uh, is adjustable, as I said, on this Fox body. What we're trying to do is square the K-member. So I'm gonna take measurements from back here and up here off of the K-member itself. And I'm gonna measure this distance and I'm gonna measure this distance. So I'm gonna find a spot on the body not necessarily the suspension because suspension parts can get old, uh, bush can, bushings can get worn out and that can skew your measurements. You're, these are really close measurements. You're within a 16th of an inch, so you need to be as accurate as you possibly can. Anyway, we're measuring the distance from here to here and here to here to make sure that this K member is straight this way. But then we also need to be concerned with the side to side because we need these to be the same, this measurement or as close to it as possible. I think we can get within a sixteenth of an inch of the tolerance. But in order to get the side to side location of the front, we're gonna measure diagonally like this from here to here and also from here to here. This will tell us where the location is side to side. So in other words, if this side is longer, that means we need to move the K member this way. If this side is longer, if this distance here is longer, then that means we need to move it this way. So the longer distance is the side that the K-member is moved over towards and you need to move it in the opposite direction to correct it. I have not completely fastened this down to the chassis yet, so I'm, I'm waiting until I get all my measurements and everything set up. So this is not bolted down completely just yet. Almost, not quite. On purpose. And on purpose. During the course of this video, I use four plumb bobs. Really, you only need one. However, I recommend two. And when you do your measurements, start in the back and make those measurements and you can mark that on the floor. Once you've got those measurements, you don't need to leave the plumb bobs hanging like I did. You can just use those marks that you made on the floor from the rear and then move up to the front with these and you can do quote unquote real time measurements if you have two plumb bobs like this. So just another tip that I hope is gonna save you time and headache. You'll notice there are these tiny holes in the K-member itself that we are going to run the string for our plumb bob through. And it's important to like keep them on the same side. So in other words, if you put the th string through this way on one side, do the same on the other side. By the way, there's one of these holes on the other side as well. And we want this to eventually end up as close to the floor as possible so that we can mark where it, where it lands. Now you can use whatever means necessary to hold this in place. I just have this little plastic clamp that I'm gonna use just to hold the string. When you attach the clamps, make sure that the string isn't hanging off of that. Make sure it's hanging straight down from the hole in the K-member. Here's something else I hope you'll find helpful that I learned later in the video, is that when you're hanging the string and you put it through, you don't want to, well, I already said that you want to make sure that it's hanging straight down, but rather than pinching it here, what I found to be a better option was to come back over here and hold it, and that way, 
the string will hang straight down from the hole and it won't move around. So when I was clamping it here, I could have moved it one side or the other. Even small little things like this do make a difference. I've removed my rear lower control arms to do some other work. However, Maxima Motorsports instructs you to take the string for the plumb bob and hang it here off of the bolt for the rear lower control arm and let it hang down. And if there's any metal protruding out here, to bend that out of the way so the string can hang straight down. What you're doing is you're taking these points on the body and you're taking a straight line from that and transferring it to the floor so that you can do your measurements. Unfortunately, in my case, I've welded in this uh, torque box reinforcement and that makes that virtually impossible. So I ended up using this little square to start with, but I found a lot of inconsistency here because I couldn't get the string to hang straight. Super important, you get the string to, the string to hang straight down and consistently the same on both sides in order to get these measurements. I finally ended up hanging the string off my rear lower control arms and that's not necessarily recommended. However, my control arms are brand new, my bushings are brand new, there's been no wear on them whatsoever so I thought I'd be okay in doing that and I believe I was. I was getting some inconsistent measurements from here though. Point is, you want to use fixed points on the body, you want to have them the same on both sides uh, so that you can get accurate measurements. I mean, you're talking about within a sixteenth of an inch here, so you really have to work hard to make sure that you do that. I realize I'm fortunate enough to have a lift and it makes this pretty easy, but you can do this exact same thing with jack stands while it's on the ground. Now I've got the plumb bobs hung, I want to take a piece of masking tape and put it sort of under the center of where it is so we can mark its location. I'm going to do that at each one of my plumb bobs. Now that I have tape on the floor, all the plumb bobs are hung, I'm going to take a marker and mark directly under the point of the plumb bob after it stops moving. Here's another tip that I hope you'll find helpful. Instead of like what I was originally showing in the video where I tried to uh, line the plumb bob up and try to make a marker mark right below the plumb bob, instead of trying to do that, what I found to be an easier option was to make the dot and then just line it up with the plumb bob rather than the other way around. And you might have to let it wait a while. Although, you know, if this is on jack stands and up in the air, the shorter the distance, the less time it's going to take to settle out. Now, you might have noticed earlier that I wasn't wearing my safety glasses while hanging the plumb bobs. For that, I apologize. I will put them on now. For the next step, we're going to measure the distances between the marks we just made front and back on both sides. Since this is going to be difficult to do by myself, I'm going to enlist the help of cameraman Brian to hold the tape measure so I can get the measurements. One more one. Over there? Right. Yeah, just go ahead and put it directly on the dot. You're dead on right now? Yeah, it looks twisted there. Looks like 76 and 5 eighths. Wow. You sure you're dead on? I'm as dead on as I can be. Okay. This side is 77 and 3 sixteenths. That's not the same. Not the same at all. This is why we're doing this, because this is way off. We need to fix that. Indeed. The measurements say that this side is way far forward compared to this side. So I'm going to knock this side back and if need be you can knock this side forward. So in other words, if you can't get the measurement you want by pushing this back, you push this one forward. And this is only part of what we've got to do. Once we've figured out front and back where this is going to sit, we need to figure out side to side. So I'm just going to use this hammer to tap this side back. Maybe as far back as that goes. So I'm going to try to move this side forward a bit. Yeah, that had quite a bit of movement there. So I'm pretty sure that this side was pushed back. This doesn't look like it moved. We're looking for a difference of only a sixteenth of an inch between one side to the other. It just moved like a sixteenth of an inch. I'm going to have to try to move this side forward again. 
Let's just try the uh, other side just to see where it is. 77 and 3 sixteenths. Dead on. All right, I'm just gonna take this as far forward and on this side as I can and as far back on that side as I can. We have improved because we've got 76 and 15 sixteenths. But that may be all we've got, unless we slot the holes more. All right, now let's check the other side. Unchanged, still 77 and 3 sixteenths. Was doing a little bit of work off camera because the measurements, what they were telling me is the Fairmont is not straight and that's not a good thing. So I decided to try a different measuring point in the rear besides what I had just to compare and see if I had the same differences between my new measurements and my old measurements. And if I did, I can confirm that the car was way off. If I couldn't confirm that, then it could mean that where I had my plumb bob hung from the back was the issue. So I just wanted to confirm, so I decided to measure from a different point. And this is the point that I chose. Up here in this square was where I was before. Now this is not necessarily something I recommend. And I'm coming off of the lower control arm here and this hole that would uh, sometimes house a stabilizer bar. Now the reason I chose this is these control arms are brand new. This is very close to the point where I was gonna measure anyway. The bushings, everything are brand new. So in other words, there's been no compliance, no moving around, no anything of this just yet. So I thought, why not just take these measurements off of this rear hole on these control arms? And uh, let me show you what I ended up with. So when I do the measurement over the, uh, here on the left now, I get 81 and three quarter. And I made a little black mark around the red dot that is where the plumb bog hangs. So on this side, I got 81 and 13 sixteenths which is only a 16th off, which is within specification. Once you've got the K member located front to back, so in other words, you've got your measurements within the 16th on side to side, you want to mark its location, which Maximum Motorsports supplied two of these L brackets, and this is what these are for. Since I've got a spacer here, I'm gonna space this down a little bit, but I want this to come in contact with the front of the K member, and I'm just gonna take this pair of vice grips here and lock it down. Going to do the same thing on this side. Now we're going to take a diagonal measurement from side to side and that's going to tell us where the location of the K member is side to side in relationship to the chassis. Okay this side is 88 and three-quarter and this side is 88 and 13 sixteenths. Now, the tolerance of these measurements is an eighth of an inch. So you're allowed an eighth of an inch difference between one side and the other. We're at a sixteenth of an inch. I'm very happy about that. Now, if the distance is greater on the driver's side, so in other words, if it's greater on this side, the K member needs to move towards the passenger side. If the distance is greater on the passenger side, it needs to move towards the driver's side. Once you get everything lined up, these bolts up here get torqued to 89 foot-pounds. These down here get torqued to 72 foot-pounds, and that's on a Fox body. Now that we've torqued everything down, Brian and I are going to recheck the measurements just to double check and make sure that nothing really moved during the process of torquing things down. Brian, let's uh, try this again. Now, as I said before, you only need to use two of these plumb bobs. Remove the ones in the back because those measurements aren't going anywhere. We have 81 and 3 quarter. You want to go diagonal or you want me to go over here? Diagonal since we're here. All right. Actually, this one's kind of bang on at 88 and 15 sixteenths. Your turn to move. Yep. That is bang on at 81 and three quarter. Like bang on. So both sides are even front to back now. This right here is 88 and 13 sixteenths. 88 13 sixteenths by 88 15 sixteenths. That's two sixteenths, which is quarter inch right? or eighth, eighth, yep. eighth inch. So we're like just barely in spec. Yes, in spec. Apparently torquing it down does cause it to move a little bit. So you might want to recheck once you got everything torqued down to make sure it's still in. Something I forgot to mention during the process of aligning this K member, and I realize I'm a little bit farther down the line at this point. Uh, and that is once you get everything into alignment, is to take a drill, a drill bit like an eighth inch drill bit like this. It really doesn't matter what size necessarily. And I, I can't quite get up in there now, but drill a hole through the K member up into the frame rail. 
And the reason I say to do this is because what this will do is it will locate this K member in the same place. So in other words, if you remove this and you go to put it back in at any point, what that's gonna do is you just take this drill bit, slide it up into that spot, and it's right back where it was. You don't have to go through that whole alignment process again. Do this on both sides. That way, if you ever have to remove this and put it back in, it'll save you a bunch of time. In closing, squaring a K member is critical to the alignment of your suspension and actually kind of your whole vehicle in general. In fact, from here on out, the next time I go to build a vehicle, the first thing I'm going to do is check these measurements. Uh, remember to find fixed points on the body, not necessarily the suspension. I, I know I did that in this video, but my parts were all brand new, my bushings weren't worn out or anything. I, I felt I'd be okay. But the people at Maximum Motorsports recommended fixed points on the body of the vehicle when you take these measurements. But also, how you hang the string is extremely important. Make sure that it hangs down straight and true. And a little tip with holding the tape under the plumb bob rather than trying to chase the plumb bob around and making a mark, that should save you some time as well. I'll post links in the description to the instructions from Maximum Motorsports so you can check those out for yourself. Also additional information that might also be useful to you will be there. If you have automotive questions not covered in this video, I ask that you head to airatthecarguy.com, also linked in the description. If you're subscribed to Air at the Car Guy, I ask that you click the little bell icon to be notified when I post new videos. Aside from that, be safe, have fun, stay dirty. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.